In this video I'm going to show you how to paint Anakin Skywalker for Star Wars Shatterpoint and based on his clothing the signs really were there that all was not as it seems. Let's get painting. The first thing I've done is primed the model using a black spray and we're going to base all of the brown areas next. Now it is a little bit of a challenge to get some different brown tones but we're going to do our absolute best here. So first off everything that's going to be brown we're going to paint it with some Rhinox Hide which is a dark brown that's a little bit on the red side and that's going to help us for some of the ready leather such as the trousers later on. Next up we're going to paint the shirt and the colour we're going to use for that is Gal Vorback Red. Now this is a very dark red, if you haven't got this you can mix some black into another dark red to get this and it does take two thin coats to cover because it's not the best in terms of its coverage. Once we've got this done we're going to move on to the silver. The silver I'm going to use is Lead Belcher. Now there's not a lot of silver on this, I'm just going to paint things like the lightsaber hilt and some of the buckles along Anakin's belt. There's not a huge amount to do uh, at all and the reason we've done these three colors without anything else in between so we're going to shade them all next and the color i'm going to use for that is null oil now i'm going to paint this over all of the shirt so everything was gal fall back red all of the silver and i'm also going to use it on the boots and obviously those uh, shin protectors that anakin is wearing When that's completely dry, we're going to go back to that Rhinox hide. We're going to use this to highlight all of the boots and those greaves that Anakin is wearing. Now, make sure you leave the darker colour in the recesses. And this is just going to be the next base, the next light up that's going to really help these to stand out. Next up, we'll take some Morn Fang Brown and we'll use this to highlight those boots. Now, the first thing we want to do is catch any raised edges that we can to give a nice crisp highlight. When it comes to leather on the boots, we want to just make sure we've got hardly any paint on our brush. And we're just going to stipple that highlight in so that when it dries, it'll blend into the one underneath and give you a nice transition. The final highlight on the boots and those greaves is going to be with Deathclaw Brown. Now this is a much brighter colour but as it dries it will blend in a little bit. And all we're looking to do here again is catch the raised edges and the sharp edges of the greaves and of those boots. So just take your time, use the shape of the model where you can and make sure you haven't got too much paint on your brush. We'll highlight the trousers and the leather belt next and the first colour we need for this is Doomball Brown which again is a very ready brown and will go very nicely over that Rhinox hide underneath and there's a reason we didn't shade these areas because we want to have a slightly different look and a slightly better transition between them that's not quite as harsh and just borders more towards that red colour. So for the trousers we just want to highlight those big areas and for the belt we just want to use the shape of the model and make sure we catch the raised edges taking our time not to catch any of the pre-painted silver stuff. The final highlight we'll use on the belt and the trousers is with Scrag Brown. Now this is a very ready orangey brown colour so we don't want too much on our brush. We want to make sure it's slightly thinned with a little bit of water as well. And again we're just going to stipple it on into those areas so as it dries it blends into the colour underneath so that you'll get a highlight but it won't be so harsh as something such as edge highlighting. Now where we do want to edge highlight is along the edges of that belt and then you can see the real difference in how that dries and looks versus how the trousers look. Moving on to Anakin's shirt and we're back with Gal Vorback Red. Now like I said earlier this isn't the best colour in the world so make sure that you give it a really good shake and you don't over thin it on your palette. And what we're looking to do is just highlight all of the folds and creases in the clothing leaving the black colour in the recesses. So take your time with this, I mean if you do make a mistake don't worry you can always just put some more null oil on, it's not uh, the be all and end all. But obviously the more care we take the less time it'll take us overall. When that's dry, we'll start to highlight the folds and the colour we're going to use for this is Scream of Pink. And again, like we've done throughout this process so far, making sure we haven't got too much on our brush and we're just catching the most raised detail and the sharpest folds of the cloth. We want to make sure that we're not putting these highlights on too thick because that will take away from the overall effect and push the shirt too far to the pink side when what we're really looking for is a dark burgundy. The last highlight we'll do on that part of the clothing is going to be with Pink Horror and again we want to make sure that these highlights are really crisp and are only catching the most raised edges and sharpest folds. So the 
key here is make sure you haven't got too much on your brush and you've got a good point and you're making these highlights as thin as you possibly can at the bare minimum making sure they fit inside the screen of pink highlights from the last stage Anakin is really coming together now so the first thing we need to do in terms of painting that uh, I guess is a leather waistcoat is covering up any bits where we've already made mistakes so I'm just going to take the same black that I've used all over the model uh, to do that you use your particular brand of black that you've got it really doesn't matter which one once we've got all the black corrected we'll go in and highlight the gloves now we're not going to do too much here we're just going to take some Mechanica standard grey and use this to highlight the sharpest edges so this is really easy when it comes to highlighting things like the fingers we just want to drag the brush along those areas we'll get a really nice crisp highlight again take your time and make sure you haven't got too much on your brush because that'll mean you've got a lot more control now if you do make a mistake it's not the end of the world you can just go back in with that black and paint over it but this is a really easy and straightforward part and it's a really nice effective way of getting some good highlighting done we'll move on to the waistcoat and of course those trails that we've got as well so the color we're going to use this is nagaroth knight because this has got a slightly purple hue on the box art which we are going to try and replicate so again very much like we've done everything else on the model is thin it down with a little bit of water make sure you haven't got too much on your brush and just focus on those areas that are going to catch the most light so for the fabric itself we just want to be painting some fairly uh, chunky areas and this will blend into the black underneath as it dries we've also got that crisp edge that we can use uh, the side of the brush on to get a nice really nice crisp edge highlight uh, because we've got that little indent between um, the edges the hem and the sort of main part uh, of the waistcoat so we want to make use of that next up we'll use some Zerius purple and again we're just going to paint this inside the Nagaroth Knight of the last stage making sure we haven't got too much on our brush and you can see here I'm stippling it in as well and again all the way through it's the same techniques we're using to get the same effect with the stippling when it dries it'll blend into that under color much better and you can always go back in and add the intensity if you feel that you need to the last stage on this part is going to be with Jean Steeler Purple, which is a very bright purple uh, in comparison to everything we've used so far. So really key not to have too much on our brush. Uh, we just want to stipple this very lightly in the most raised parts. Uh, we also want to catch the sharpest edges as much as we can, and that'll give us a really nice crisp highlight that looks really effective. Again, when it's on the tabletop, it'll look really good. We'll paint Anakin's face next, and this is going to be a key part of the model, so we want to make sure that we do a really good job of it. Now, I'm using some magnification for this, so if you need to do so, then feel free. I use three and a half magnification glasses that I got off Amazon. They're really cheap, but they really can help, and they will save your eyesight in the long run. The colour we're going to base his face with is Buckman's Glow. When that Buckman's Glow is done, we're then going to take some Cadian Flesh Tone and paint over almost the entirety of the area that we just painted with Bugman's Glow. We're going to leave the eyes dark and we're going to leave the darkest shadows dark, but otherwise we're going to paint the whole area with this Cadian Flesh Tone. And this is really effective because it will start to blend down really nicely into the layers underneath. To start highlighting the face, we'll take a 50-50 mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Ushamti Bone. Now, we're looking to catch the most raised areas with this, so we're going to focus on things like the nose, the brow, and the cheekbones, and also that jaw and chin as well, because that's those are the areas that are going to catch the most light. So take your time with this, make sure you haven't got too much on your brush, and you can always go back and play with the colours that you painted previously if you need to correct any mistakes. And I made a couple of mistakes here, I just went back in with the Cadian Flesh Tone and just painted over us, particularly under the cheek where it'll have a little bit more shadow. We'll then add a little bit of white into that Ishamti Bone and Cadian Flesh Tone mix. Not a huge amount, just enough to lighten it up a little bit. And we'll use this as the final highlight. And again, we're going to focus on those same areas such as the nose, the brow and the cheekbones because that's what's going to catch the most light. And that's what's really going to stand out on the model. So it's nice and simple. You're not going to be using a huge amount of paint. And make sure you haven't got too much on your brush for this point either. Now, I wanted to smooth some of these transitions a little bit. So I took a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone. And I thinned this down quite a lot into what we call a glaze consistency. I then put my paintbrush in it, wiped it off on a paper towel so there wasn't much paint on the brush, and then just painted this under the cheeks. And once you do one or two layers of this, you'll start to see it smooth out that blend a little bit. And this gives you a really easy way of getting a nice, effective skin tone. The last thing I did was paint Anakin's scar using some Gal Rollback. So make sure it's thinned down, you haven't got too much on your brush, and just follow the indentation that's there on the model.
To paint Anakin's hair, we're going to use similar colours that we used for his boots. Now, we've already based it using that Rhinox hide, so the first thing we need to do is go in and do some highlighting. And the colour we're going to use is Mournfang Brown. And as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm just catching all of the sculpted parts of hair, leaving that Rhinox hide in the recesses, but painting the majority of the head with the Mournfang Brown. Next up, we'll highlight using that Deathclaw Brown. And again, this is much brighter, but again, we're focusing on the sculpted hair. So we're gonna use the shape of the model. We're gonna drag our brush down it to get nice crisp highlights. Really important that you haven't got too much paint on it, but this is a really easy and straightforward technique. Just take your time with it. And then finally, we're gonna mix some Shabti Bone or Bone Color into that Deathclaw Brown for the final highlight. And we're gonna focus this towards the front of the head, particularly to the top of the head which is obviously going to catch the most light. There's one more bit of highlighting before we get to the really fun part of painting the lightsaber, and that's all the silver. And this is really easy and straightforward. Just take a little bit of chrome from Vallejo Model Air or any bright silver we will do. If you've got Stormho silver, you can, of course, use that. And what we're looking to do is just catch the raised edges and the sharp areas, just being careful, particularly around the belt where we're going over parts that we've already finished. All right, now it's the fun part. We're painting the lightsaber, which is the last thing we're gonna do on Anakin. So the first thing is to base the blade of the lightsaber in white. Now I'm using bold titanium white from Pro Acryl. Use whatever white you've got. Just make sure that it doesn't have hydrophobic properties. And what I mean by this is if you use AK white and then put contrast paint on it, which is what we're gonna do, it'll start to repel and it'll bubble up and you won't get the smooth coat you need. So if you're not sure how this is gonna work, then try it on a spare bit of plastic first. So it takes two coats, but we'll get that blade completely covered. The finishing touch to get a nice glowing blue blade is really easy. We're gonna take some frost hard contrast paint and we're gonna paint the entirety of the blade with this. Now we're gonna work quite fast here, so maybe watch this before you try it. Once we've got that done, we're gonna clean our brush off. We're then gonna grab it and wipe it across the blade of the lightsaber. And what it'll do is it'll take away the wet paint along that one particular plane. And that'll give you that really easy and subtle glow effect. Now, if you need to do it a couple of times, then you can do. If you make a mistake, you can always repaint it white and start again. It's really easy and straightforward. So there we have it. Anakin Skywalker is done and ready for the tabletop and on the verge of turning to the dark side. Now, of course, you're going to need some allies for Anakin and who better than the 501st Clone Legion? Check out this video here on how to paint them really, really easily. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.